Hello and welcome back. The video today is the start of a new small series of videos about character controllers or player controllers in Godot. I will give an overview to what character controllers are. We further set up a basic Godot project with a scene and the node structure for a generic character controller. We will reuse this in future videos to make more specific character controllers as part of this series to better understand their differences and how to build them with Godot. For this tutorial series, we use a simple outdoor environment that consists of CSG shapes and some tree models. I made an earlier tutorial about CSG shapes and a video about importing Blender models into Godot. Links in the description. The description also has a link to the asset collection with that tree. So let's get started with our generic character controller. But first, let's think about what they actually are. So, what are the different types of character controllers? First of all, we need a character. A character is a representation of you. In a VR experience, that is a representation of you in a VR world. For example, for a VR game or anything really. Applications do not really need this, with the exception of a VR application that also needs a representation of you in the virtual world. More about that in a later video. Okay, and it's also much cooler to do that with a hat. And then there is a camera. We have learned earlier that without a camera, you cannot see anything and everything we do here is basically visual. So we have a camera. So the character controller is what moves your representation, your player around, basically the camera. The first person character controller sees the world like you do, through the eyes of the character. The character moves around, looks around and sees the world like you would, if you would be there. The third person character controller is a variation of that. The camera is moved out of the character and follows the character usually top-down at a certain distance, sometimes changing directions with the character, sometimes reducing and increasing that distance. There are a lot of variations. So we now know what a first-person character controller is, and we also know what a third-person character controller is. So what is a second-person character controller? It is a lot less often to find quite specific. It is basically the slightly weird notion of you seeing yourself through the eyes of somebody else. It cannot be a camera that follows you, but it must have the feeling of an intelligent movement, like an AI or another human being, another character control. In movies this is sometimes created by a camera perspective that indicates that somebody is watching the main character of the movie, often in the horror genre. I have a link to a video from another YouTuber about this topic, link in the description. So let's create a node structure of a generic character controller. We have here our world and we click this plus button and we create a kinematic body. A kinematic body is great because it is ignoring physics and it gives us a great deal of control. We call that a player and we save this as a scene, branch as a scene. And then we can open it as a scene here. And we have this little warning uh, notification sign here because we have to assign it a collision shape. We add a child and we pick a collision shape. We also select another child and pick a mesh instance. We now have another warning sign here because we have to pick a collision shape. So we click in the inspector and shape. We pick a capsule. The capsule is good because it represents a player. And we change that to 0.5, make it a bit thinner and a little bit longer by height 2. We do the same thing here, a capsule, we click on the capsule, 0.5 and 2. And now we can use a little trick, we select both nodes here and we pick the transform part because both of them have one. 
we transform by 90 to flip them up and then we move them 1.5 up to make them level with the ground. Now we add another child node and we pick a spatial. A spatial is the most basic 3D node that there is and we call that the head. We add a child node to this, another mesh instance, mesh instance. And this is the eyes. So we move this head up roughly to where the head would be and the eyes gets another capsule. Far too big in my opinion. So we make that a 0.1 and a 0.5 and move that out. We need to turn this so we take transform. This time we rotate it around the y-axis by 90 degrees and we stick it back into the body just so we can uh, recognize in which direction the player is looking. And finally, we pick a camera and we just leave it where it is. Finally, I'd like to pick um, material here. I pick a spatial material. I click on the albedo, pick a color something in the blue area and I do that same thing material spatial material albedo big black nice dark black and that is our character controller so we can now look over to our world and we see the character controller being in it so the last part is we're going to create some key bindings for the code that we're going to write in the future. We pick under project, our project settings, and we select the second tab here, input map. We're going to create some actions here and they're all going to start with move, move up, move down, move right, move left, and move jump. And we're going to pick keys for that. Keys, we are going to move up with W. We're going to move down with S. We're going to move right with D. We're going to move left with A. And we're going to jump with the good old spacebar. And that's it. So this is all for this video. Please note that we do not yet have a working character controller, but we have a generic template structure that we will use for future videos of this series. We will basically adapt and copy from this to build various controllers without repeating the same parts and mostly focusing on logic and code. Please like and subscribe and hit the bell so you do not miss anything. Leave a comment for feedback and requests. And mind yourself and see you soon.